after the visit of the Savior to the Nephites, the disciples of Jesus had formed a church of Christ in all the lands round about. All who came to them and truly repented of their sins were baptized in the name of Jesus and received the Holy Ghost. The people all became converted unto the Lord, both Nephites and Lamanites. Great and marvelous works were performed by the disciples of Jesus, insomuch that they healed the sick and raised the dead and caused the lame to walk and the blind to receive their sight and the deaf to hear. These miracles were all done in the name of Jesus. The Lord prospered the people greatly in the land. They built cities again where they had been burned, even the great city of Zarahemla. One hundred years passed, and the disciples of Jesus, whom he had chosen, had all died except the three who desired to tarry. And there were other disciples ordained in their stead. There was no contention in the land because of the love of God which dwelled in the hearts of the people. There were no envyings, nor strifes, nor lyings, nor murders, nor any manner of wickedness. And surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. After 200 years passed, the second generation were all gone, except a few. The people had multiplied until they were spread upon all the face of the land. They had become very rich. In the 201st year, there began to be some among them who were proud, those who wore costly clothing and the fine things of the world. From that time forth, they had their goods no more in common among them. They began to divide into classes and to build up churches unto themselves to get gain and to deny the true church of Christ. A few years later, there were many churches in the land. They claimed to know the Christ and yet they denied most of his gospel. Those who denied Christ caused his disciples who tarried on the earth to be cast into prison. But by the power of the word of God, which was in them, the prison walls fell, and the disciples went forth doing great miracles among them. And now it came to pass in the 231st year, that there was a great division among the people. There arose a people who were called the Nephites, and they were the true believers in Christ. Among them were the disciples of Jesus who wished to tarry. Those who rejected the gospel were called Lamanites, and they did not dwindle in unbelief but they willfully rebelled against the gospel of Christ, and they taught their children that they should not believe. The wicked people became strong and much more numerous than the people of God. 260 years had passed away, and the Nephites also began to be proud in their hearts because of their great riches, and they became vain like unto their brethren the Lamanites. From this time, the three disciples began to sorrow for the sins of the world. When 300 years had passed away, both the Nephites and the Lamanites had become exceedingly wicked, one like unto another. The Gadianton robbers spread over all the face of the land, and there was none that was righteous save the disciples of Jesus. The records had been handed down to Ammaron, and when 320 years had passed away, Ammaron, being moved upon by the Holy Ghost, hid up the records which were sacred unto the Lord, that they might come again unto the remnant of the house of Jacob, 
according to the prophecies and the promises of the Lord. Ammon sought out a young boy of about 10 years of age named Mormon. I perceive that thou art a sober child and art quick to observe. Therefore, when ye are about twenty and four years old, I would that ye should remember the things that ye have observed concerning this people. And when ye are of that age, go to the land Antum, unto a hill which shall be called Shim. And there have I deposited unto the Lord all the sacred engravings concerning this people. And behold, ye shall take the plates of Nephi unto yourself, and the remainder shall ye leave in the place where they are, and ye shall engrave on the plates of Nephi all the things that ye have observed concerning this people. Mormon remembered the things which Ammon commanded him. When he was in his eleventh year, he was taken by his father into the land southward, the land of Zarahemla. The whole face of the land had become covered with buildings, and the people were as numerous almost as were the sand of the sea. In this year, there began to be a war between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the borders of Zarahemla. The Nephites had gathered together more than 30,000 men, and they fought against the Lamanites and killed many of them. When Mormon was 15 years old, being of a somewhat sober mind, he was visited by the Lord and knew of the goodness of Jesus. He tried to preach to the people, but was unable to, for the people had willfully rebelled against their God, and the beloved disciples were taken away out of the land because of the people's iniquity. Although Mormon was young, he was large in stature, and the people of Nephi appointed him to be their leader and the leader of their armies. In his 16th year, he went forth at the head of an army of Nephites against the Lamanites. Mormon said of these events, the land was filled with robbers and with Lamanites. And notwithstanding the great destruction which hung over my people, they did not repent of their evil doings. Thereafter, there was blood and carnage spread throughout all the face of the land, both on the part of the Nephites and also on the part of the Lamanites. And it was one complete revolution throughout all the face of the land. The Nephites began to repent of their iniquity and to cry even as had been prophesied by Samuel the prophet. For behold, no man could keep that which was his own because of the thieves and the robbers and the murderers and the witchcraft which was in the land. When I saw their sorrow before the Lord, my heart did begin to rejoice within me, knowing the mercies of the Lord. But behold, this my joy was vain. For their sorrowing was not unto repentance, but it was rather the sorrowing of the damned, because the Lord would not always suffer them to take happiness in sin. And they did not come unto Jesus with broken hearts and contrite spirits, but they did curse God and wish to die. The Nephites fortified the city of Shem and gathered their people as much as possible that they might be saved from destruction. Mormon spoke to his people and urged them to stand boldly before the Lamanites and fight for their wives and their children and their homes. His words aroused them somewhat so that they did not flee but stood against the Lamanites. The army of 30,000 Nephites fought against 50,000 Lamanites and the Lamanites began to flee. The Nephites pursued them and beat them again but the strength of the Lord was not with the Nephites. They had become weak like their brethren. The Nephites made a treaty with the Lamanites and the Gadianton robbers. The Lamanites gave the Nephites the land northward, and the Nephites gave the Lamanites the land southward. The Lamanites did not come to battle again until ten more years had passed. The Lord spoke to Mormon. 
cry unto this people, Repent ye, and come unto me, and be ye baptized, and build up again my church, and ye shall be spared. Mormon did cry unto the people, but it was in vain, and they did not realize that it was the Lord that had spared them and granted unto them a chance for repentance. And behold, they did harden their hearts against the Lord their God. After ten years had passed, the king of the Lamanites wrote to Mormon, telling him that they were again preparing to come to battle against the Nephites. Mormon gathered his people in a city by the narrow pass which led into the land southward. There they placed their armies that they might stop the armies of the Lamanites before they got possession of any of the Nephite land. The Lamanites came to battle and twice were beaten and driven back into their own land. And now, because of this great thing which the Nephites had done, they began to boast of their own strength and to swear before the heavens that they would repay their enemies for the blood of their brethren who had been slain. Mormon refused from that time forth to be their leader because of their wickedness. He refused to go up against their enemies, but did as the Lord had commanded him and stood by as an idle witness to manifest unto the world the things which he saw and heard. A few years passed, and again the Lamanites came against the Nephites with all their power. Their army was so large that they were not numbered. From this time forth, the Nephites gained no power over the Lamanites, but began to be swept off by them, even as a dew before the sun. Mormon saw that the Lamanites were about to overthrow the land. He went up to the hill Shim and took up all the records which Ammoron hid there. And it came to pass that I did go forth among the Nephites and did repent of the oath which I had made that I would no more assist them. And they gave me a command again of their armies, for they looked upon me as though I could deliver them from their afflictions. And behold, I was without hope, for I knew the judgments of the Lord which should come upon them. For they repented not of their iniquities, but did struggle for their lives without calling upon that being who created them. I, Mormon, wrote unto the king of the Lamanites and desired of him that he would grant unto us that we might gather together our people under the land of Cumorah, by a hill which was called Cumorah and there we could give them battle. The king of the Lamanites granted Mormon's request. The people went to the land of Cumorah and pitched their tents around the hill. Mormon began to be old and realized that this was the last struggle of his people. He finished the abridgment of the record of Nephi and hid all the records which had been entrusted to him by the Lord in the hill Cumorah, except the plates on which he made the abridgment, which he gave to his son, Moroni. The Nephites now saw the armies of the Lamanites marching toward them, and with that awful fear of death which fills the wicked, they awaited them. The Lamanites fell upon them with the sword and with the bow and arrow and the axe and all manner of weapons of war. The Nephites were hewn down and Mormon fell wounded in their midst. All but 24 of the Nephites were killed. On the morrow, when the Lamanites had returned to their camps, these 24, including Mormon and Moroni, beheld from the top of the hill Cumorah the tens of thousands of the Nephites who were killed. Oh, ye fair ones, how could ye have rejected that Jesus who stood with open arms to receive you? Behold, if ye had not done this, ye would not have fallen. 
But behold, ye are fallen, and I mourn your loss. Oh, that ye had repented before this great destruction had come upon you. But behold, ye are gone. And the Father, yea, that eternal Father in heaven, knoweth your state. And he doeth with you according to his justice and mercy. And now, behold, I would speak somewhat unto the remnant of this people who are spared. Know ye that ye are the house of Israel. Know ye that ye must come unto repentance, for ye cannot be saved. Therefore repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus, and lay hold upon the gospel of Christ, which shall be set before you not only in this record, but also in the record which shall come from the Jews. And ye will also know that ye are a remnant of the seed of Jacob. Therefore ye are numbered among the people of the first covenant. And if it so be that ye believe in Christ and are baptized, first with the water, then with fire and with the Holy Ghost, following the example of our Savior, it shall be well with you in the day of judgment. After the visit of the Savior to the Nephites, the disciples of Jesus had formed a church of Christ in all the lands round about. All who came to them and truly repented of their sins were baptized in the name of Jesus and received the Holy Ghost. The people all became converted unto the Lord, both Nephites and Lamanites. Great and marvelous works were performed by the disciples of Jesus, insomuch that they healed the sick and raised the dead and caused the lame to walk and the blind to receive their sight and the deaf to hear. These miracles were all done in the name of Jesus. The Lord prospered the people greatly in the land they built cities again where they had been burned, even the great city of Zarahemla. One hundred years passed, and the disciples of Jesus, whom he had chosen, had all died except the three who desired to tarry. And there were other disciples ordained in their stead. There was no contention in the land because of the love of God, which dwelled in the hearts of the people. There were no envies, nor strifes, nor lyings, nor murders, nor any manner of wickedness. And surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. After 200 years passed, the second generation were all gone, except a few. The people had multiplied until they were spread upon all the face of the land. They had become very rich. In the 201st year, there began to be some among them who were proud, those who wore costly clothing and the fine things of the world. From that time forth, they had their goods no more in common among them.